Are you using your umbrella correctly? When there's no wind, it makes perfect sense to hold your umbrella vertically. But what if there's a breeze? When the umbrella is vertical, it cannot completely cover you. Instead, you should point your umbrella into the wind. By holding the umbrella at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the rain, you are maximizing the amount of rain blocked. And who said trig is hard? The relationship of two lines being perpendicular is called orthogonality. We've seen orthogonality help us keep dry, but how else can it be useful? Imagine that instead of rain falling from the sky, it is a barrage of arrows. Oh, and you have a shield instead of an umbrella. At what angle should a soldier hold his shield to minimize the chance of impalement? That's right, perpendicular to the arrows. But what are some modern uses of orthogonality? Here's a standard wireless router with two antennas. Did you know that turning these two antennas perpendicular to each other can help increase the strength of your Wi-Fi signal? This is because Wi-Fi is a radio wave and radio waves are generally broadcast in one of two orientations, horizontal or vertical polarization. Ever wonder why older cars have those tall, slender antennas? It's because AM-FM radio is vertically polarized from radio towers. The same concept applies to Wi-Fi signals in your home. Take an iPad, for example. Holding it in portrait mode, the Wi-Fi antenna may be aligned horizontally to receive horizontally polarized waves. If you only broadcast vertically polarized waves from your router, this may produce spotty reception. One fix is to only use the iPad in landscape mode, but why limit yourself? If your router has two antennas, just position them 90 degrees apart. That way you broadcast both vertically and horizontally polarized waves. Another use of orthogonality is on solar farms. To maximize the power output of a solar panel, the panel should be perpendicular to the direction of incoming light. This maximizes the light shown on the solar panel. If the panel is not perpendicular, less light will hit the panel, resulting in less power. Because of this, solar farms will vary the tilt of their panels throughout the year, depending on the season, to maximize power output. Athletes also use orthogonality. This hockey goalie will want to hold his stick perpendicular to the oncoming puck to guard the most net possible. Notice that as the stick moves away from being perpendicular, the blocked region decreases. Another example is in swimming. Swimmers use a technique called Early Vertical Forearm, or EVF, to maximize the amount of water pushed with every stroke. The idea of EVF is to get the forearm and wrist as perpendicular to the surface as possible early in the stroke. The more vertical the forearm, the more water is pushed, and the faster the swimmer can go. We can also see orthogonality in nature. Do you know where sunflowers got their name? It's not because they look like the sun. Rather, it's because before they're pollinated, sunflowers will turn over the course of the day to ensure they always face the sun. Much like solar panels, the sunflowers want as much light as possible to hit them. This warms up the flower, making it more attractive to pollinators such as bees. Once mature, the flowers stop turning and face east. Speaking of the sun, have you ever wondered why the equator is hotter than the poles? First, let's look at a small-scale example. When the direction of the light is perpendicular to the surface, the light shines over the smallest possible area. In other words, the light is most concentrated. But when the same light is angled, it shines over a wider surface area. This results in less concentrated light, and less light means less heat. Now let's look at the Earth. At the equator, the surface of the Earth is perpendicular to the direction of incoming sunlight. Thus, the sunlight is most concentrated at the equator. But as you travel away from the equator, the surface of the Earth begins to slope. The result is that sunlight must shine over more surface area, resulting in less intensity. The concentration of light continues decreasing until we reach the poles, where a small amount of light shines on a very large area. This is not the full story, however, as the Earth's rotational axis is actually tilted. Notice how at this moment, sunlight is more concentrated in the southern hemisphere, but half a year later, the northern hemisphere is receiving more sunlight. This is what causes the seasons. Now, if you're troubled by the image of an Australian Christmas, I can't help you there. <laughs>